morning. It is fair week. We show pigs at the fair, so this is a very busy week for us. And today I have so much to do. My to-do list is like a mile long. It's one of those days where I have no idea how I'm going to get it all done. I might not get it all done, but I'm just going to get started and see what I can do. So I always start my day in the kitchen, just thinking about our meals for the day, what needs to be done in here, and then head outside. I was going to start a batch of sourdough sandwich bread first thing this morning, but I forgot to feed my starter last night. So I can't do that. So now I'm just gonna feed it and um, it should be ready by the afternoon. So I might still be able to start my bread today. If not, then I'll just, start it tomorrow but first things first I need to feed my starter so I use all different kinds of flour um, this is a stone ground white wheat flour but I've used all different kinds I've made like an all einkorn starter that works great I use all-purpose that works fine um, mainly just make sure you use unbleached the only time I've ever had problems with flour is when I used bleached flour. I don't usually buy bleached flour, but that was all I had been able to find at the store. So I used it and my starter just did not like that. All right, so my starter is, how am I gonna spill this? <laughs> nice and thick and it should be ready to go by this afternoon. We'll come back and check on it later. And just like every morning, I need to fill the Berkey. The best way to describe the kitchen of a homestead during the mid-summer months is there appears to have been a struggle. You guys, there appears to have been a struggle pretty much every day in my kitchen. You can see there are just things everywhere, cans of things that need to be taken downstairs and stored, but you know, there's only so much time in a day, so it is what it is. I actually like to keep a pretty tidy and clean house but in these summer months, I know it, it's just a season, a very short season, and certain things can wait, certain things cannot wait. So the floor being mopped can wait, but tomatoes on my counter that are covering my entire the entire surface of my counter, those need to pre be preserved, those cannot wait. So there's a lot of prioritizing in the summer months, and that means that the house just isn't as clean as I would like it, but alas, it's just a season. I'm just going to do some quick damage control here so I at least have counter space and then get some meat thawing out for supper. I'm not sure what I'm going to make yet, but as long as I have something thawed out, I'll figure it out. I have some cinnamon rolls left over from Sunday morning breakfast, so this is going to be our very quick breakfast this morning. That way we can get back to work. I canned a batch of bone broth last night and let it cool overnight, so this morning I removed the rings, labeled it, and set it aside for storage. Today is diaper washing day, so I need to get my diapers going, that way they have time to dry out on the clothesline. And then I have some cleaning to do in the kitchen. I let a pot boil over and my stove is a mess, so I use these little Pampered Chef scraping tools on my stovetop and they work so well. I have lots of chores for the kids to do today, but when it comes to getting the kitchen cleaned up, especially when I want to do so in a hurry, then I just do it because I can do it quickly. It gets done right the first time and it's summer, so it never hurts to give the kids a break. Okay, so I did some damage control in the kitchen, got all of the morning chores going in the house. I need to get out and milk the cow. But first, I want to do one thing, and that is make my magnesium bicarbonate. So this is not new news. You guys probably know that pretty much everyone is deficient in magnesium. We used to get magnesium, more magnesium that is, in our food and in our drinking water, but due to a lot of environmental things, that just doesn't happen anymore. And magnesium is really critical for over 300 functions in the body. Um, some sources say like 600 functions in the body, but whatever that number is, it's a really, really critical mineral. And when you're deficient in mag, your digestion is slowed, you can have headaches, you're gonna feel fatigued. 
things in your body just are not going to be working properly. Now there are many, many, many forms of magnesium and most forms do not absorb well inside of the GI tract. In fact, that is actually why people take some forms of magnesium to relieve constipation. Since the magnesium doesn't absorb well in your gut, it stays there and it kind of just takes anything that is built up out with it. So I actually have here this Oxy powder magnesium. This is a great one for constipation relief, but this is not the magnesium that you would want to take to bring your levels up so that you're not deficient in magnesium. For that, the best thing to do is to make magnesium bicarbonate. Well, I guess you don't have to make it. You can buy it pre-made, but it's really expensive for a little bottle and it doesn't last you that long. You can actually make your own magnesium bicarbonate and I'll, I'll show you, I'm gonna do it right now. It's, it's really easy to do. It's so, so much cheaper and it lasts a lot longer than if you were to buy it. So you will need magnesium hydroxide. I use Crucial 4. I will link this for you guys in the description. And then you're also gonna need carbonated water. You can just buy carbonated water. I have a soda stream. So I just make my carbonated water and then mix my mag hydroxide in with that to make magnesium bicarbonate. There are many ways you can do this. You can buy it pre-made, you can buy carbonated water, or you can do like I'm doing and make everything yourself. It's not that much extra work. It saves a lot of money. So I'm gonna start with some filtered water. Now, when I make magnesium bicarbonate, I make a big batch. So I actually make enough to fill this gallon jar. And then I just leave this in our fridge and it lasts my whole family for like a week. I just add a splash of this into our water or juice or whatever we're drinking in the morning and then we're good to go. Soda streams are really easy to use. You just fill this little bottle that comes with, with water, load it into the machine, push the button a couple times and you are finished. Once you have your carbonated water here, just add about a half teaspoon of mag hydroxide to your bottle. There you go. I'm gonna add this in here, put the lid on and shake it up really well, really, really well, like a minute. Okay, now that I have shaken this up, I'm just gonna pour it into my gallon jar and then start the process over until I have filled this jar with magnesium bicarbonate, then this will go in my fridge. It took four of these to fill up this gallon jar, but I've got my gallon jar full of mag bicarb here. Now I'm going to put it, it's not ready yet. It needs to fully dissolve here. So you can see it's very, very cloudy, but after a few hours in the fridge, this will be clear. It will just look like water. There shouldn't be any sediment left. So what I'm gonna do now is put it in the fridge and then like every half hour, I will take it out and shake it up. Make sure your lid is on really, really well before you take it out of your fridge and shake it up. So every half hour, take it, just shake it up really good and Let some air out there and just wait until it's totally clear then i will show you guys how we drink this now i need to get outside to milk the cow and do some outside morning chores so i'm gonna change the baby put him in my wrap and head out for the morning It is already very bright and hot this morning. I'm gonna head down and milk Mary, then head back up because I've got lots of stuff to do. I have a ton of tomatoes that I need to do something with. So I think I'm gonna make some sauce for canning today.
Mary does not really like to share her milk with me. She loves to hold it back, which is a little bit aggravating, but I still get almost a gallon from her even though we are still calf sharing. So it's enough for us, but I will be really happy when we wean her here in a few weeks and I get all of her milk and cream. I'm gonna put my milk in the fridge and while I have the fridge open, I'm going to give my magnesium bicarbonate a good shake. As you can see, I have a lot of tomatoes that I need to do something with. So I'm going to be making tomato sauce today. My recipe that I've used for the last several years is probably a lot different than most and definitely different than the tomato sauce that your grandma would have made and canned. But I really like doing it this way because it takes a lot less time. So typically when you make tomato sauce for canning, you have to remove the skins from your tomatoes first. You can do that by um, blanching them and then removing them. You can do that by roasting them or even by freezing them first. But it, it takes a lot of time and it's really messy. And then you cook your sauce down and you strain out the juice. There's just a lot to it. And you start with a bunch of tomatoes and end up with just a tiny little bit of sauce. So what I do is I actually leave my tomatoes whole and I simmer them all day with carrots, onions, and garlic and a few other things I'll show you guys and I will link the recipe for this sauce in the description too it's very quick and easy not a lot of mess so I'm gonna go ahead and get started on this so it can simmer the rest of the day and then hopefully I will be able to can this tonight first I'm just going to wash my tomatoes then I will rough chop them and add them to that big stock pot that you see there behind me before preparing the rest of the ingredients. I grow mostly Roma tomatoes, so that is what you see here. Um, I know there are a lot of exciting varieties, but Romas always just do so well for me and they're very meaty and great for sauce making. All right, I'm done with my tomatoes. Now I need to cut up my carrots. Let me pick all these up. This will all go down to the pigs and the chickens, nothing goes to waste, which is one reason I love having pigs. I mean, chickens will eat a lot of stuff. They'll eat, they'll definitely eat these tomatoes, but pigs will eat everything. All right, so this is a massive, massive 25 pound bag of carrots. All the carrots that I grew in the spring, I already cut up and froze, and I don't, I wanna keep those for actually, you know, cooking and eating carrots. I don't wanna get those out and put those in my sauce. So on my last month's Azure Standard Order, I ordered this huge bag of, of carrots because I knew that I would be making a lot of tomato sauce and I knew I was gonna need a lot of carrots. So I'm gonna wash these, cut them up, and add them to my massive stock pot there with my tomatoes. I'm just rough chopping these. Like I said, all this stuff is gonna simmer. So I'm gonna, after my carrots, I'll cut up some onions and some garlic. So it doesn't have to be exact, just, just a good rough chop for everything in the stock pot. And once it's finished, I'll use an immersion blender to blend it all up. This recipe calls for one pound of carrots to every five pounds of tomatoes. I have a lot more than five pounds of tomatoes, so I've got lots of carrots here, but how many you use will just depend on how many tomatoes that you need to can. All right, so you can see here this massive five gallon stock pot is filling up quickly. My big onions are all outside curing, so some of the smaller onions that I pulled out of the garden, I'm going to use in my sauce. And also the last of last year's garlic harvest. Kids are doing some chores while I finish up in the kitchen. Mom. And Viv is pushing Ernie in his little swing. He loves to be outside and swing. If you guys have the ball canning and preserving book, this recipe is really similar to the end of summer pasta sauce. It just doesn't have quite as many things because it's not the end of summer and I don't have all these things right now. All right, I've got my onion and garlic here and I just halved my onions and crushed my cloves. Like I said, it's all gonna simmer, it's all gonna get mixed together, so it doesn't need to be minced up really finely. I'm gonna add this into my stock pot. 
And then as far as herbs go, I'm just gonna use what I have. So I get some thyme here, some basil and parsley. So probably just put all this in here. Maybe like a tablespoon of thyme, something like that. I don't have much parsley in here, but I'm gonna put it all in. And some basil. All right, a few teaspoons, maybe a tablespoon of salt, something like that. And last but not least, red wine. I know you can use white wine. I think the ball canning and preserving recipe calls for white wine, but I've always used red wine, so that's what I'm gonna stick with. Just gonna add a few cups. All right, I've got everything in here. So I'm gonna turn this on and simmer it. I need to take a break for lunch. And today I just am cleaning out the fridge. We're gonna have leftovers. I do this a lot, at least once a week. I, I go through the fridge and anything we have, I try to make at least one meal out of it. So we have kind of a mixture of things. I've got some chili left over. I've got some rice and then I had some meatballs and marinara sauce. So I kind of mixed that with the rice for the kids. And this is our lunch for today. I need to call John in. He does all of our grass cutting now. It is pretty awesome having big kids that are such great helpers. The kids are working on their um, posters for 4-H. Yeah. They have to start setting up at the fair tonight, so they need to. we need to finish these and get them laminated, and then they will take them in and hang them up in their stall. So there's Vivi's for her, her pig, Rosie, and John's got his over here for his big pig mo. I'm taking a little nursing break here. So the way that they do it at our fair is every family gets their own stall. So John and Vivi will share a stall, which is really nice that their pigs will be together and we can keep our all of our stuff in the same spot. And we have to be there every day. So our fair is lasts for five days. We have to, it starts on a Wednesday. So we have to go there tonight to start setting everything up. And then tomorrow, Tuesday night, we have to actually bring the pigs over and have them weighed in. Now, the weight range is 260 to 310 pounds. So they have to be in that range, otherwise the kids cannot show. Now, Vivi should be good to go because her pig is like 287, or she was 287 a few days ago, so she'll be fine. John's pig was really close to 310, so that's gonna be a close one. Now he could take, he's got two pigs that he tagged, so he could take the smaller one, but he's really wanting to take his big pig, Mo. That's his favorite one. He really wants to show Mo, so he's kind of risking it by taking him over there and weighing him because if, if he's over the limit, then he's not gonna be able to show, but that was his choice. That's what he wants to do, and you know, if he can't show, then he can just, always sell the pig and he'll recoup the money that he's put into raising it that way, but it will definitely not be as much money as if he would have been able to show it. So it's a little bit of a risk, but I'm really hoping that it pays off for him. The baby is sleeping, so I'm gonna keep this train rolling and keep getting things done. But I did just get a package in the mail from Earthly, so I'm gonna show you guys what I got. I don't remember exactly what I ordered, but um, Earthly is just one of the companies that I use regularly. I've loved everything that I have tried from there. Let's see what I got here. All right, so okay, I've got some oysters here, oyster capsules. Oysters are the second highest copper rich food. And if you guys have followed me long enough, you know that I have talked about this before. Copper is an essential mineral. It is necessary for the metabolism of iron. So most often people are not iron deficient. In fact, most of us are probably iron overloaded. It's just that the iron is stuck in our tissues because we're getting exposed to synthetic iron all the time, as opposed to getting iron in its natural form from food when it's accompanied by other vitamins and minerals in a perfect ratio that God designed so that we, our bodies can actually use it. There are a lot of benefits to eating oysters in your daily diet. If you like just eating oysters, then by all means, go for it. I do not, so I take oyster capsules. Oysters are pretty popular, and I think one of the biggest reasons they're popular is that they can really 
boost the libido. So oysters are an aphrodisiac. You guys can look up the science on that. I actually have a whole highlight on my Instagram just called oysters where I break down the science on how that works, like why they're an aphrodisiac food. You guys can check that out. Lots of people love their oysters for that reason. Um, all right, let's see what else I've got here. Got some more vitamin D cream here. This is not synthetic vitamin D, it's just cod liver oil. So the vitamin D in here comes from cod liver oil. Now, I do not actually use this for the vitamin D. I get it for the retinol. So cod liver oil is very, very rich in retinol and I apply this to my face. This is the only skincare that I use. I just put this on a little bit of this. Let me show you, just maybe tiny little bit. I put on my face a couple times a week after I get out of the shower. Okay, let's be real, like once a week. I don't shower a couple times a week. It's very thick. Yes, it smells like cod liver oil, but I don't care because the retinol content is just crazy high and it just makes my skin feel very soft. I restocked on All Purpose Salve and Baby Balm. These are two things that I just like to have on hand. The Baby Balm especially is actually really good for all sorts of things, not just baby. In fact, I don't even know if I've used this on Ernie. Um, he hasn't had a diaper rash, so I haven't had to really use anything on him as far as that goes, but I have used it on myself and the kids a lot. This is a combination of calendula and chamomile, and those herbs together kind of act like a steroid. I'm not saying they're a steroid. I'm not saying to replace any steroid with this. I'm saying they act like a topical steroid. So if you think of like those dry itchy spots that you get postpartum or any eczema like spots, this would be a great thing to try. Really dry itchy red spots on my arms after I had Ernie and this cleared the, that up right away. And then the all purpose salve is the same. It's got calendula chamomile, but it also has lavender. So it's really good for any kind of burn, cut, scrape, all kinds of little, little ouchies and boo-boos that kids get. I go through one of these pretty frequently. And the last thing that I got this month is Earthly's Immune Biotic Tincture. You guys can guess from the name what this does, why I like to have it on hand. If we are ever under the weather and it's something that I feel like is taking us a while to get rid of, then this would be my go-to. I will link all this stuff and my discount code for Earthly in the description for you guys. My discount is Hopewell Heights 10 and you get 10% off when you use my code for anything from Earthly. The kids are finished with their posters, so now I just need to laminate them. John and the kids found a huge stash of eggs. I don't want to tilt this because I will drop these eggs. But this is full of eggs right here. And I do not know how old these eggs are. So I'm going to have to float test them. Um, if you have never done this, it's a really easy way to tell if your eggs are still good. If they float, they're bad. And if they sink, then they're good. So far, so good. We already floated a bunch of eggs and they all sank, so they're all good. But we're just gonna float the rest just to be sure. Now, the thing I don't like about having to do the float test is that I will now have to store these eggs in the fridge because once they're washed or submerged in water, then the bloom, that protective coating on the outside, it's not intact anymore, so they can't be stored at room temperature. So, you know, that's the one downside of doing this, but at least I know that they're good now. That one to the side. I don't know if that's... Couple more eggs. Oh, I thought that one was gonna sink. Okay, good job. Just one more, one more. I put my eggs in the fridge and gave my mag bicarb another shake. John took the big kids to town for their practices, so I'm gonna play outside with the little boys for a little while Ready? while it's just us. We're back inside and my sauce that's been simmering, I think it's ready to blend up. I'm actually gonna take a little bit of that sauce and use it on my pizzas. So killing two birds with one stone. And then after I get done with dinner, I will have to can all of that sauce. So this is what 
summer days and nights are made of when you have a garden and a homestead. A lot of late nights in the kitchen by the stove watching the pressure canner out here. All right, looks like this is ready. Ooh, very smoky. Ready to go. All right, I'm just gonna use my immersion blender to start blending all this Look at that. Perfect tomato sauce with minimal effort. Now, this sauce needs to be pressure canned. So I've got my pressure canner here with just a little bit of water in it. So pressure canning is different than water bath canning. When you can something in a water bath, you want the water to totally cover your jars, but in a um, pressure canner, you just want a few inches of water in the bottom. So it's kind of hard for you guys to see, but I just have maybe like three inches of water in here. And I am gonna go ahead and heat up my jars. So these are clean jars. You guys do not skip this step because when glass changes temperature too quickly, it will break. I have, uh, just ask me how I know. But anyway, you, you need to heat, you need to preheat your jars before you fill them with your sauce and then put them in the canner to actually can them. So I'm gonna put my jars in here. I know my canner fits seven quart jars. My jars have been preheated, so now I'm just gonna ladle my sauce into them, leaving one inch of headspace at the top. Um, it's important to use a funnel when you're doing this, otherwise you will make a big mess and it just takes longer to clean the jars because you do want to wipe the rims of the jars so that you have a clean seal when you add your lids and rings. Now, it used to be standard procedure to warm your lids and rings prior to applying them, but that is not the case anymore. You do not have to preheat lids and rings. You can just apply them at room temperature and they will seal just fine. Once again, it is really important to work quickly while you're applying your lids and screwing on your rings fingertip tight there. That way your jars are hot when they go in the canner and there's not a temperature change like I had talked about earlier. Now that all of my jars are in my canner, I'm going to put the lid on. This is a pressure canner, so the lid locks in place. It is not going to pop off or explode or anything crazy like that. It's very secure once it locks in place. Once the lid's on, I'm going to let steam build and vent for 10 minutes before I add my weight and let my pressure build up to 10 psi that is when I will start the processing time which the processing time for quarts of this sauce is 90 minutes I so just to clarify I have not started that 90 minute timer yet I need to add the weight first now that my weight is on it will not take long at all for this to build up to 10 psi maybe just a couple of minutes. So this is not a time to walk away and do something else. Just hang out by the canner, wait until you get to 10. See, I'm already there. And then you're going to turn your heat down to low, low to medium maybe. Um, you'll have to play with it maybe to get it to maintain that 10 PSI. And now is when you set your timer for your processing time. So like I said, that is 90 minutes for quarts of this sauce. If I were doing pints, it would just be 75 minutes. And now all I have to do is wait quite a while. So I might clean up the kitchen or read or find some way to pass the time. My timer is going off. So now I will turn the heat off and let the canner depressurize over time. Do not take your weight off and bleed pressure off. Just wait patiently until the gauge is down to zero, then you can take your lid off and start removing your jars from the canner. When you take your lid off, tilt it away from you. Otherwise, you will end up with a face full of steam, and that is not fun. 
The jars will be very hot at this point. The sauce will probably be boiling inside them. So make sure that you have some kind of towel or something to set your jars on. Don't set them directly on a cold countertop because that temperature shift could cause them to crack. I am finished for tonight. Now I'm just going to let these jars rest. I let my jars rest overnight on the counter. And then this morning I took the rings off. You always wanna store your jars with the rings off. That way you can tell if your seal is compromised. So they're ready to store. The last thing I need to do is just label them. I always write what's in here and the date. And actually lately I have been letting my, my little guy who is six label all of our cans and it is just so cute. Let me show you guys. So cute seeing how he spells everything. So this is Pickles, P-I-K-O-L-S, precious. So I'll label these and then they will go in storage. All right, well, it has been a very busy, more than a day now, day and now into the next morning, but thank you guys so much for watching. Please be sure to click subscribe and hit the like button before you go. I make new videos on motherhood, homesteading, and life on our farm every week.